And uh, in the Buddhist tradition, uh, we speak of uh, the ten kinds of uh, fetters, the ten kinds of bonds that uh, um, that, uh, that deprive us of our freedom. And to liberate means to, to liberate from these uh, ten fetters. They bind us. They are called uh, samyojana. And uh, in Chinese, it, uh, it is translated as tiang shi. Tiang means to, to bind, to bind. And shi means uh, They push you to do and to say things that you don't want to do and to say. They are very powerful. So you have to uh, practice uh, concentration in order to be able to untie these kind of uh, fetters. And the first is uh, uh, the first samyojana. Samyojana is uh, craving. There is uh, the danger of craving. Because we believe that the object of our craving is what we really want, <coughs> of, uh, <coughs> is what uh, can really bring us uh, happiness. But uh, we don't really see the danger of uh, running after the object of our craving. <coughs> And with craving in us, we are not in peace anymore. We are not satisfied with what uh, we are, with who we are. We are not satisfied with our situation. We cannot uh, feel that it, you know, we are happy in the here and the now. The teaching of the Buddha about uh, living happily right in the here and the now uh, is based on the fact that if uh, we practice looking deeply, we see that we have uh, enough conditions to be happy in the here and the now. But if uh, there is the flame of craving that is inside, we don't have the capacity to do that anymore. We believe that uh, without that object of craving, we cannot be really happy. So we lose all our peace, we lose our capacity of being happy in the here and the now. So that is one of the ten factors we have to, uh, to undo that factor. And later on there will be an um, exercise on how uh, to look at the objects of our uh, craving in order to see the danger of uh, of uh, of uh, uh, running after the objects of our uh, craving. And the Buddha used so many uh, images. It's like um, one of the images is like um, someone holding a torch and going uh, against the wind. So uh, the torch and the fire will burn his hand. So that is uh, the, the, the danger of uh, craving. The second, the second um, image that Buddha proposed 
is um, a dog running after a piece of bone. That is only a bone. And even if the if the dog uh, have the bone, has the bone, and try to uh, to do everything he could with the bone, he will never be satisfied. Because the, in the bone there is no meat, no juice left. This is a, a bone. And sometimes it is a bone made of plastic. So the object of craving is like that. It can never satisfy us. So the image of a bone uh, caught by a dog is a second image that the Buddha proposed. And the third image is the image of uh, a hook that a fishman uh, use to catch uh, the, the fish. And you have a very uh, appealing bait, and you, and you, and and the hook uh, uh, um, bring the bait, uh, and uh, the bait, the, the hook was thrown into the river. And when the, the fish saw uh, the bait. Is so appealing, and he wants to bite, but the fish does not know that inside of the bait there is a hook. So the object of our craving is like that. The danger hidden in the object of um, of our uh, of our craving, and sometimes the bait is also made of plastic. The fish cannot eat. It is very appealing. So you have to to look deeply in order to see the true nature of the object of craving. And if we see clearly, we are not appealing. It's, it's not attractive anymore, and we are free. That is why looking deeply and to see the danger of um, of crave, of the object of craving. So uh, craving is uh, the first uh, of the ten fetters. The second is um, violence, anger. The flame of anger destroys as much as the flame of craving. When anger inhabits us, we have no peace, we have uh, no capacity of uh, being happy in the here and the now. And uh, that is why we have to practice uh, looking deeply, to practice uh, concentration in order to see that uh, that anger has been born from ignorance, from wrong views, and so on. Understanding the first noble truth, the second one, we will be able to uh, overcome our anger and uh, untie the knots of uh, anger. In fact, uh, Samyojana can uh, be translated as knots. <clears throat> so if uh, a practitioner is uh, a feel that anger is in him, in her, and she has to practice in such a way that she can untie the knot of anger in her, and that brings uh, liberation, liberating the mind. And the third is uh, ignorance. Ignorance is um, 
wrong virus. We, we are confused. We don't know where to go and what to do and what not to do. We are confused. And we do the wrong thing. We say the wrong thing because uh, we are ignorant. We don't, don't know what is right and what is wrong. And that is uh, the third uh, kind of factor we have to undo. The fourth is uh, complex, complex uh, of uh, superior treaty of inferiority and of uh, equality. <coughs> that is um, because we have a notion of self and we compare that self with the other self. That is why the three complexes will arise. We suffer because of these uh, three kinds of complex. And the fifth is um, doubt. Doubt. Suspicion. Suspicion. And doubt. And when we, are, we have that suspicion, that doubt in us, we are not in peace, we are not free. And our suspicion, our doubt can also come from our ignorance. And the f- <coughs> and next is uh, views. Kiem, okay. of course, the views here is uh, wrong views, not right views. There are five kinds of views that uh, could be uh, <clears throat> termed as wrong view. The first view is that you believe that the body, this body, is yourself. Thân kiến, thân kiến. You simply believe that you are this body. So if you believe like that, it means that uh, uh, with this disintegration of this body, you are no longer there. And you believe that before the formation of this body, you were not there. So there are many... Uh, many effects that come from that kind of uh, wrong view. The second is uh, to believe in uh, pairs of opposite. You believe that the right is uh, totally uh, uh, other than the left. 
There is a birth, there is a death. There is inside, there is outside. There is a being, there is non-being. There is a, um, sameness, there is a otherness. All these concepts that form a pairs of opposite, if you are caught in it, that is wrong views. The teaching of Buddha help us to transcend the pairs of opposites in order for us to come to a, a view free from all view, that is the middle way. The middle way is the way transcending all pairs of opposite, including being and non-being, birth and death, inside and outside, object and subject. This is very, very deep, very, very wonderful teaching. This is called a thang kien. Thang kien, body as a self. And being kien, believing in extreme. And then the next is a kien, two kien. Attachment to views. You learn something. You have a notion. You are caught by that notion. And that is the end of your progress on the spiritual path. So whatever you have learned, whatever you have heard, you should be careful. You should not consider it to be the absolute truth. You should be able to let it go in order for you to be able to come to a higher truth. It's like in science, if you have discovered something, and if uh, you believe uh, that to be the ultimate truth, and then you don't search anymore, you are not a true scientist. So, in order to progress in our path, we have to be ready to release our view, release our understanding. It's like uh, climbing on a ladder. If you have come up to the fourth step, and if you think that you are the highest, and then there's no more climbing. You have to abandon to release the fourth in order to get to the fifth. And when you have got to the fifth, you should be ready to, to, to to release the fifth in order to come to the sixth. So knowledge is an obstacle for knowledge. So if you see something, you understand something, uh, be sure that that's something you can release in the future in order to get to a higher kind of truth. That is uh, the teaching on non-attachment to views. I think that's uh, very uh, scientific. Tà kiến, perverted view, perverted view. <laughs> Suppose you believe that uh, things just uh, happened uh, <clears throat> by chance, there is no cause and effect. That is a kind of uh, perverted, perverted view, wrong views.
the the law is that when you sow uh, the beans, the seed of the beans, you will uh, you will uh, harvest the beans. When you sow the seed of anger, you will ha- harvest anger. But you don't believe in in the in the law of cause and effect. You think that everything is uh, just by chance. Or uh, when uh, you observe uh, one thing, uh, deeply you see that uh, that thing manifests because of uh, many conditions coming together. But you believe that you don't need many things coming together, you need only one cause. Uh, that is the kind of view that is uh, perverted. You don't believe in the uh, Four Noble Truth, that uh, suffering has come from a way of living that is full of wrong perceptions and um, wrong thinking, wrong speech, wrong action. You believe that suffering just come like that without any cause. So that is a a wrong view. And then the last one is Yei Kam Thu. Yei Kam Thu Kiang. That is attachment to, uh, to taboos and uh, to uh, rituals. You believe that performing such a ritual, uh, you can get liberation, uh, salvation. You are caught by the rituals. You believe that you can eat every kind of meat except beef. Because eating beef will, uh, uh, will prevent you from uh, being saved. Uh, you believe that you can eat every kind of meat except pork. So that is the kind of uh, taboo, that kind of um, precept, that kind of rituals that you can get caught in it. The fact is that uh, with uh, understanding you can liberate. It's not by performing rituals and things and and observe, observing taboos that you can get liberation. So these are ten kind of factors that uh, we should uh, be liberated from in order for us to be to be free and happy. <laughs> 